Let us jump straight into it. <laughs> what did you make of the State of the Union? Well, you know, I mean, it was a real whiplash experience because there were the moments when he was appealing for unity, you know, right. saying he wanted to take a bipartisan approach, and then there were the moments when he was lying. Um, and, <laughs> and essentially baiting Democrats with those, like, descriptions of abortion laws that were yes. entirely exaggerated. And then there was the whole border, you know, which he... You would think after the longest shutdown in federal history, he might temper his language a little bit, he might retreat, but it was as blood-soaked and lawless and, you know, fantastical in terms of its relation to the truth as ever. Right, but it seems like Trump has a very simple message, and that is, let us all come together doing what I want. <laughs> that seems pretty much what his message is. I would, um... <laughs> I think that's fair. I would just elongate it a little bit. Let us all come together doing what I want and, and constantly praising me. Oh, yes, I think I, would, I think that's he part loved of that. it, too. Yeah. I mean, when, when, when... I mean, that was probably one of my favorite moments. We talked about it earlier, but was when, when women stood up in Congress and it was the Democrats who were newly, the freshman uh, Democrats, and he was like, yeah, that's, that's what we did. Yeah. He made they it, did it not do was that. his thing. No, I mean, this was great because everyone was wondering how was he going to be affected by yes. Nancy Pelosi literally being on his shoulder. Right. Like, if you looked at the, say, the right camera angle, she was like this head on his left shoulder. Yes, right? yes. And you thought, is that going to freak him out? Is it going to put him off of his modest game? And the answer was he was going to pretend to be a feminist for the evening. He was right. going to take credit for all the women in white sitting there. And the truth is, if the Republican candidates whom he had advocated for had won, there would not be a record number of women in the House. Wow. So that was... Um, it, his inner feminist is fraudulent, let's say. <laughs> to say the least. To, to say, say the least. least. Yeah. Um, the, the, the lies in and around the border. It was particularly egregious. I mean, he came in and basically went from the State of the Union is strong to America is dying very yeah. quickly because immigration is uncontrolled and we need to stop it with a wall. And the caravans are coming. And yes. they're sending the troops to the border. Yes, the because caravans otherwise are, it's lawless. are coming. Yes. We yes. just found out now yeah. that they're coming. <laughs> There's a new one coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like, like at, at what point do you think... Like, how do you, how do you even think Democrats begin to combat this narrative? Is there a thing, or do, or do they just have to legislate around what Trump... Well, is? I mean, so far, they've been fighting it with facts, and the American public is on their side. If you look at opinion polls, Americans don't think we should do anything and everything to have a border wall. Right. They blame Donald Trump for the shutdown. So, so far, Democrats are winning, and that's why I think it was so unnerving to have Nancy Pelosi's head on his left shoulder. Right. You know? When you look at um, some of the people they cut to in specific moments, speaking about issues, you know, there was the one cut where they went to... They went to Bernie Sanders, specifically, when he talked about socialism. Yeah. They're like, socialism will not live in this country. They cut to Bernie, and just like... Yeah. It's it, yeah, it, like it, flop sweat. Right. Yeah. It, 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 do you feel like... Do, does he write those four specific people, or do you think the news just finds a narrative and they go, this is who this line best applies to? I think all of the above. But I think the socialist line was... He, and there is... There are a number of Democrats, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez among them, who wear the label Democratic Socialist. Right. The socialist part of that label is something that Republicans are seizing on, and I think now, as we get toward the 2020 campaign, you're going to hear Donald Trump talking more and more about Democrats' desire to turn America into a socialist country, which is, of course, absurd. Right. One of his biggest achievements that he touted in the evening was that we are not at war because of him because in his opinion, we would have been at war it were it not for him. And North Korea has not done anything yeah. because of him. But that's not what his intelligence officials have said. Well, first of all, it was so surprising to hear Donald Trump give himself so much credit, because usually he's so <laughs> modest about these things. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that... <laughs> that sort of threw me off entirely, yeah. But, um, no, it is fascinating, because just a week ago, his intelligence chiefs were giving public testimony, and they were basically saying the opposite of half of what he said in his right. speech tonight. So you got to give the president credit. He sticks to what he wants to say, even if the facts completely contradict him. Right. <laughs> going forward, do you think this is going to be one of those nights where people go, oh, the, he was presidential, he, he looked like a president up there, and he's ready to lead this country? Or do you think the facade of Donald Trump reading words off a prompter has now... Uh, it doesn't affect people as much anymore? I'll answer your question with a question. How soon does he begin to tweet? That's when... <laughs> that's when the presidential aura goes completely away. Oh, that's powerful. Teleprompter Trump and Twitter Trump are two entirely different pieces. What's interesting is I find that his tweets uh, directly correlate to what they say about his speech on the news. So you find if everyone on cable news says this was a great speech, Donald Trump is going to tweet out wonderful things in the morning saying, let's come together. And if you write something horrible about him, he's going to tweet. So the power is in your hands. Oh, wow. I don't know how to deal with that, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the Thank show. You. Excited to have you on again. <laughs> Frank's columns appear in the New York Times every Sunday and Wednesday. Really smart, really funny guys. To subscribe to his weekly newsletter, go to newyorktimes.com slash Letter. Frank Bruni, everybody. <laughs> 